So welcome back guys. I'm gonna be talking about table calibration and how to get the twist out of it when you first set up your table or you move it to a different location. So we have a few ways of doing it and it all depends on what tools you have and what you're looking for for as far as tolerance or how flat the table is. And the first one is just using a construction level. This is gonna get you well within the parameters of probably any job you need. And I like to use a good construction level like this Stabila. This is a six foot level, and this is gonna get the table pretty close, and you're probably not gonna notice too much of a difference. So let me show you on actually what you're doing and what you're looking for. So this table has wheels, and when I roll it into position, the table is going to be basically kind of following the floor. The way I've designed this table is to be extremely rigid, but there is a little bit of twist that the table has under natural circumstances. Just leaving the table teeter-totter on three legs, you're probably looking at a 40 thousandths dip on one of the corners that's unsupported. So how do we get the table to come back and spring flat? The one way I like to do it is use a gigantic straight edge. And you guys have seen me use this tool before in the past. It is by far the fastest and the most accurate way to get the table twist out. The other way to do it is to use a level. This is gonna be your cheapest option. This level's just a couple hundred dollars. And what we're gonna be doing is using the Earth's horizon and using that as our gauge. Uh, when I use my straight edge, I'm actually using the straight edge as the gauge and I don't need to be level. But in this application, this table is actually going to be level when we're done. Where I like to start, I like to start on three legs or one side and get that one fairly level. And the way we do that is we just turn the wheels. I'll set this up on this straight edge because I know that this beam on the outside is fairly straight. And I'm just going to watch the level until it comes up. And I don't really care about the middle one yet. So if anything, I'm going to raise the middle wheel. And you do that by returning this big round knob and I can tell by looking at the bubble either this leg needs to come up or that leg needs to go down. It's much easier to go down than up so this leg down she goes. So you're going to loosen the lock jam nut and then we're just going to turn the caster. We just need to turn this until we're in the line. Now that we have that what we're going to do is go Pick one corner, so we're gonna make an L. We know that this is level, now I want this side to be level. I like to, like to give the level a little slide just to make sure there's nothing underneath of it. And I can see that this side's high, this corner is high, so we're gonna drop it down. I'm watching the bubble. Now theoretically, this one shouldn't have moved. <laughs> we're gonna come back and check. Okay, so now all we have to do is worry about this corner. This side needs to come down. Now, theoretically, this side between these two should also be level. Okay, so that's one way to do it with the level. This is gonna get you probably within plus or minus five thousandths. It's gonna get you really close, just to do it with the level. Second way to level the table is with a laser. So I've dimmed the lights so you can actually see the laser so I can show you what's going on here. This is an auto leveling laser. It's probably accurate to an eighth of an inch, no more than that. But what we wanna do is set this up on the outside of the table, not on the table. So what I'm gonna use is a camera tripod, but you can use anything you got laying around. I want it to be as close to the table as possible because the laser is gonna get wider the further away you get. We're gonna lose some of our accuracy. There we go. Cut the laser on the tripod, but you can just set it on a table surface, anywhere where it's not vibrating or moving around. And then we're gonna turn it on. Now, as you can see, I'm probably too high off the table. Okay, so you see how I'm 14 and a half inches off the table? I don't want that because I might be skewing the results. I wanna get this laser line down close to the one to two inch elevation. So I'm removing some errors there. Okay, so let's drop the tripod down, see what we got now. So I'm sitting at it one inch and an eighth at the top of the line. That's pretty close. As long as I pick a standard, I can go from corner to corner. One inch and an eighth at the top of the line. On this corner, just a skosh under, under the line. I know I'm really close. I'm gonna come over here. Ooh, I'm above. I can see that this leg needs to go higher. So if your line is higher than the tape, you need to raise the foot. So this leg needs to go up and this 
leg needs to go down, okay? So that's a, I'm off about a 16th of an inch according to this laser. Which one do you trust? Do you trust the construction level or do you trust the laser? It's a little hard to say, right? That's two ways to go about the same task. That's gonna get you within an acceptable flatness for this table. The next way to do it is gonna be even more accurate. So let me go grab that tool. Now we're starting to increase our accuracy a little bit. And this is a machinist's level. This is a sheer Tomiko, and this is gonna measure within half thousandths of an inch over the distance of this level. And as you can see that the bubble in here is super sensitive, and the only time I'd probably ever recommend using a tool like this is that if you are really, really, really obsessed with flatness like myself. <laughs> but other than that, you probably don't need this tool. Just keep in mind that the machinist level is only measuring across a 12 inch distance. It can get you into trouble if your tabletop has a bow or a sag in it. To see if the table has a bow or a curve in it, you need to move the level across the entire surface to really indicate what's happening. And we will try to dial it in with this level, and I can already tell that this side needs to come up, just like the laser said and the construction level. But we're gonna watch it, and we're gonna see how close we can get it. So let's start over. And this is the same way I'd set up a milling machine or a lathe. I would use this tool to also set up one of those machines. So it says that this leg needs to come down some more. So let's lower it. So the middle legs I don't do anything with until the very end. As I lower the leg, we should start to see it come into view and we want the, that bubble to be in the center. So I got the bubble perfectly in the middle. It's probably not gonna stay there. Let's go to one corner and see how close we get. So this side is now perfectly level. Now we need to get the tilt. We're gonna do the same thing. Much like this again, this leg needs to go down. Go the other way, go the other way. Boom. I'm gonna give you guys a disclaimer. If you're trying to achieve an accurate table level like this with this type of machinist level and I wanted the tail to be as flat as possible, I would ditch the wheels and I would go with a fixed leg with the standard foot. It's gonna give you the best ability to level it out as accurately as possible. But I'm keeping the wheels on just for this demonstration, okay? All right, we can check this way. Woo! Man, we are getting this thing dialed. Now let's go back to where we were originally. That table is dialed in, man. It's so nice to have a nice rigid table. And look at that. This side's perfect also. We should be able to check it anywhere on the table. Look at that. Even in the middle, we're good. Sweet. I mean, we're within thousandths of an inch. <laughs> I just have to chuckle because this is just insane for a welding table. <laughs> I just have to laugh. It's ridiculous. Who in the right mind wants a table this flat? <laughs> It's, it just goes to show you, you can have it if you want it. You don't have to sacrifice. All right, let's put this back and let's go with one more approach. It's amazing how many options you actually have to dial this table in. Okay, we're gonna put it back. Let's grab one more tool. All right, look at this. So this is an eight foot precision straight edge. This thing's still expensive. This is around $800, but it's probably your next best option besides a super long precision straight edge like I normally use in here. What you wanna do with the straight edge is you wanna go corner to corner. So the straight edge isn't gonna tell us that we're level, the straight edge is going to flatten the surface. And I would rather have a flat table than a level table. And what you're gonna go is from corner to corner and check the teeter-totter and we're gonna stuff shims underneath it. The straight edge needs some help because it wants to fall over. So get yourself a, uh, an extra helping hand or some magnetic one, two, three blocks, something like this and hold it on the diagonal. And then we're gonna look for uh, any air gaps underneath. So one way you can do this is you can get yourself a flashlight and you can shine a, a backlight across it looking for the light to shine through underneath and then adjust the leg to, do, to get all the light to basically go dark. Or you can use a shim, something like this, this piece of shim stock. And you're gonna just try to get it to go underneath the surface. And if one leg was high, what you're gonna see is that there's gonna be a gap in the middle. If the one leg is low, you're gonna see a gap on the ends. I find the straight edge to be the fastest way to do this, and it's my method of choice, but this is a much costlier tool than the levels are. But it's much more precise, and you can see we did a good job with the, with the other level. We are, nothing's sliding in underneath. This is a 2000th shim, and does not wanna go underneath there anywhere. We did good. So let's turn it around, 
Check the ends first. Yeah, look at that. This table is dialed flat and level. Hopefully this helps you in the future, get your table calibrated. And if there's any more questions, please leave those down below. I'd be happy to answer them for you. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.